Love and greetings to you and welcome to the Marriage Foundation YouTube channel. This is where people come, many are subscribed, people come in order to hear the truth about marriage. There's so much missing, so much misinformation in the world today, we know that, but we don't realize how bad it's infected our ideas about marriage, relationships, how to get along, and I used to be a divorce mediator. I used to agree with everything that is out there, let's put it that way. And, and the psychologists, the couples counselors, they were my friends. They sent me business. I got along well with them. I respected them because they wanted to help people. It wasn't until a couple asked me to help save their marriage that I started really looking into what marriage is all about. And I discovered there's a science, a real hard science, not this loosey goosey labeling of people and blaming issues and childhood traumas, because all that is, is irrelevant when you want to have a good marriage. And it began with the question of why do people get married in the first place? And the real answer, that I discovered, and it didn't just pop into my head. Then not why did you marry your soulmate, but what's the real reason we get married? And it's twofold, and they're tied together, two sides of one coin. We want to be happy. Human beings want to be happy, all of us. And different things, we want to be happy and we want to experience love and why that is we'll get into later but that is the bottom line reason for getting married not just because we fell in love with this person or that person and now we're on our way not because it's just the thing to do not just because we want to have a family those are good answers but we want to be happy and then we get married and we do nothing to make ourselves, to make our spouse, to make our marriage happy. We don't do anything. Why? We're not taught. It's not your fault. So a successful marriage, let's be very clear, because this topic is about a successful marriage. This topic is, these are the five secrets of a successful marriage. They're only secrets because we're not taught. They shouldn't be secrets. You'll realize these are obvious, but not without that context of understanding what is a successful marriage. How can you say this is how you can have a successful marriage if you don't know what a successful marriage is? So once again, a successful marriage is a marriage that is constantly filled with happiness, ever increasing happiness, and ever-expanding love. Now, in case you didn't think about it, which you didn't, those two are spiritual. Happiness and love are spiritual. They're not psychological. They're not whimsical. Sure, there's emotional happiness, there's emotional love. Those are low. Those are not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about that experience of love that you have, let's say, like when you see your kids asleep and it just, ooh, it just pours out of your heart. Or when you had that moment with your soulmate before you got married and you realize they're the one, that's the love I'm talking about. And the happiness, the other side of that coin, that's spiritual. It's not material, you can't quantify it, can't measure it, it's overwhelming, spiritual. And that's a successful marriage where you're feeling it all the time. Now, none of us feel it all the time, but you can do what you need to do to experience it most of the time, you can. And at the Marriage Foundation, that's what we do. We teach people how. And that's what this video is about. What are five secrets for a successful, meaning filled with love and happiness, marriage. Number one, always pay attention 
to your spouse's needs. Men and women, doesn't matter. Why? Why, and you've heard this expression before, happiness comes from the giving, not the receiving. And when we're paying attention to their needs, we're paying attention to when the opportunity exists for us to help them fulfill a need that is giving, that is coming from the heart. It's very deep. It's not just mental. You have to make it deeper from the heart. I want to help you take care of this need. Isn't that a beautiful thing? Think about it. When your husband or your wife, and you know when it's happening, have that experience of you, they get a smile on their face, their eyes light up, because you're making a spiritual connection with them. So you cannot ask for that, because then it won't be real. But you can give it, and who benefits? Both of you. They're receiving the love, not the gift of the giver, not the outer stuff, but the love that is driving it. And that lights up your marriage. And so where people are so selfish in this world, and necessarily so, because the world is brutal. But in your marriage, it shouldn't be like in the world. Your marriage is different. It's separate. So in your marriage, learn to give. Give according to your spouse's needs, not according to what you think will do the trick. You know, many people sign up for our courses because their marriage is in deep trouble. And we always ask what's going on. And we hear their responses and we know what's going on, what is really going on and try to put them on the right path. And we are successful with it. A vast majority, high 90s, are successful when they take the course for men or for women. And they hear that they should give according to their spouse's needs because their marriage is already in trouble and they're trying to save it. And that doesn't really work. It has to be charged with love. You always have to be coming from a place of love. You have to control your mind, put it off to the side, you might say, and energize your gift with love, whatever it may be. Now, some women and some men will tell us, well, I give them blah, 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 yaddy, yaddy. I give them all this stuff. I pay attention. I do this. I do that. But it's not supercharged with the love. It's mechanical. Doesn't do it. Doesn't do the trick. Doesn't do the trick because it's not deeply sincere. It's not where your spouse or you are cultivating the love and merely using the opportunity to express love. See the difference? Number two, this is huge. This is huge in a world that is so stuck in materialism that almost none of us know even what it means. Learn how to open your heart. This is huge. This is especially difficult for men. Women have a much easier time opening their heart because nature has gifted them with the responsibility for bearing and raising children. And so if you're the woman, if you don't have this quality of opening your heart, those children are going to starve to death because you're going to be paying attention to other things, but your love for them is so total. Now, men love children too, but it's just not the same. Women have that ability. Now, it gets distorted and twisted by how we think, but that ability 
has to be cultivated. And this is huge. A lot of women have quasi lost their ability to open their heart to their husband because of the sexual revolution where they've had multiple sex partners and also in nature. And this is tied to subconscious stuff and instinct and all of that. And by opening your legs to multiple men, your heart starts putting protective layers over it. And now that you're married to the man, you have to get rid of those protective layers and learn to open your heart completely. And husbands have to start from scratch. I had to start from scratch too. By the way, just so you are clear on this, when I started the Marriage Foundation, I didn't know any of this stuff. I learned all this stuff and then I started working with it and working with couples and building and building. It's taken years to get to the point of where I know. But even this idea, I'll tell you something that I don't share with many people, but many years ago, I, I'm on a path, a meditation path to find God. That's sort of my drive in life. I want to find God in this life. I started in 1972 meditating, prayer, practicing the presence of God. And I've learned many techniques. And then I found a particular school of techniques that work for me. And there were techniques, meditation techniques that elevate you, that bring you slowly. And in, among those is introspection, dispassionate introspection and other actual techniques as you sit there and meditate. And I asked someone who had been much longer on this particular path, I said, and, and part of this school is meditation plus devotion. Well, I didn't like the devotion part. It wasn't me. So I asked this person, um, do I really need to do the devotion? <laughs> and the short answer was, yeah, it's an indispensable. You have to have devotion because God listens to the heart. And I went, ah, oh. and I started cultivating devotion. And then when I started getting into this marriage helping business, I realized, and when I say business, I don't mean as trading dollars, but the world of marriage, I realized that marriage is a religion where Cultivating our devotion is essential for experiencing why we get married in the first place for love and happiness. Isn't that beautiful? I think it is. So anyway, we have to learn to open our hearts. Very, very few people in the world are open. They think they are. They'll say they are. But we're not until we work on it. And even then, I'm not there yet. That's how long it takes. All right. Number three. And this is going to be out of your reach, but it'll give you something to strive for. All of these are out of our reach, by the way. And that's, that's why I, I redefine marriage. I call marriage an individual spiritual path that two soulmates take together. You see, it's so cool. When you think about it like that, a spiritual path, there's joy in the effort, there's joy in the intention, and we don't reach the ultimate joy necessarily in this lifetime, but boy, do we feel it, and it's wonderful. And so, live your marriage on the plane of love and joy. And this is important to always remember that the mundane stuff will overwhelm you if you're not consciously living your marriage as the first priority. And you live your marriage on the plane of love and joy and you take care of the mundane stuff anyway. And all of us can do that. Yeah, it takes effort, but we're capable, every one of us. And that's a religion isn't it? And you'll be happy all the time. And we have thousands of people who have taken our courses. They're happy all the time. They'll write to us and they'll say, my husband or my wife is still stuck here. What can I do to help them? And our response is, 
just be you. You can't really help them because a spiritual path is something you take when you're ready. But by being who you are, living in this joy and happiness, this love, they will feel the effects and it'll change your marriage dynamic completely. Number four, I like this. And this is deep, simple, but deep. A lot of simple things are deep, aren't they? Never allow anything into your marriage space that isn't decidedly positive. This is deep because we're not taught that we are in full charge of our minds. Now, most of us have never even thought of being in charge of our minds. We think we are the mind, but we're not. We are souls, not a religious conversation. We are souls. We have a mind, but we're the soul. Free will is yours, the soul, not your minds. You control the mind. You know, we used to hear this expression that if I tell you not to think of an elephant, you're going to think about an elephant all day. It's not true. It's your mind. You decide. Only you gets to decide what you're going to think, what you're going to say, what you're going to do, and what you're going to feel. You have 100% control over that when you start to learn how to master your mind. But for starters, just refuse negative thinking. Go on a negative thinking fast. No longer think anything negative. And what's going to be there? You think of your mind as a container. Think of yourself as a container. If you only put in sweet, loving, positive, kind, it's you. But if you allow in anger, jealousy, greed, lust, that's you. All of us are a blend, but you can eliminate the toxins of jealousy, of anger, of disappointment. All of that stuff got to go. That's important. That's one of the secrets for a successful marriage is to not allow it to be tainted by that which you, would, you don't want anyway. Number five. This is big. It's deep. Simple. Selflessness. Selflessness. We are free souls. But when we become selfish, when we want it our way, we want it our way, in this way, in that way, and we're not open to our spouse's ideas. And we go, because. No, no. It isn't because. It's because of this innate. And you know, I did a whole science around marriage. And so I trace things back to kind of all the negative stuff starts in our biology. You see, we have a mind and we have a body, but the body, as intelligent as it is, it doesn't think. It merely fights for self-preservation. There it is, self-preservation. Every living cell in every living cluster of cells in every defined creature or plant is defined alive by its drive for self-preservation and procreation. Procreation is just another way of increasing the chances of living by increasing more of the same species. And so what happens is because we have turned over our lives to our mind and it is just being pinged constantly by this body that only is concerned with itself, we become selfish. We don't have to be because we are free souls and we have the ability to stop it in its tracks. Isn't this stuff cool? And by the way, if you're a therapist, if you're a clergy and you're helping people with their marriages or you want to, 
We have a course for you so you can become part of TMF. It's the Marriage Foundation course for marriage counselors, real marriage counseling, not this Western psychology pseudo counseling where all they do is they go over issues and stuff. And we'd love to have you. So that's it. Those are the five secrets. They shouldn't be secrets, but we live in a dark world. We really do. But your marriage shouldn't be dark, should it? Your marriage should be light and love and joy, harmony. And it can be because you have free will. So hopefully you like this video. You got something out of it. You're thinking now. You're going to be walking around happy all day because you choose to be. You're going to tell your spouse how much you love them because you do. And you're going to focus on positivity and you're going to be happy. And if you need more help, you can write to us. Go to our website. See what we have to offer. There's so much. I'm glad you stopped by. I'm Paul Friedman. I'm the founder of the Marriage Foundation. I'm at your service. All of us are volunteers here. Okay, not all of us. Some, some we have to pay to take care of things. But those of us who are working with you are volunteers. And we appreciate you. We love you and we're here for you. God bless you. Take care.